Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Smart Money. Now, 31st March is the last day that you can file your taxes and today we are here to tell you about what you should be doing right in terms of taxation, what are all the do's and don'ts that you need to remember as well as you know how to go about it. All of your questions will be answered over here, right here on Smart Money. Our experts today are Amrin Agarwal, Financial Educator and Director at FinSafe India and Sujit Bangar, the founder of TaxBuddy.com. Uh, lady and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us. You know, a lot of us know about what we should be doing, but many of us don't know how to do it, right? There's a whole new generation of investors, generation of salaried earners who now are starting to find their feet in many of these issues, whether it's investments or taxation. So I thought, let me just uh, sort of spell it out for them. Mirin, let me start with you. First, how do I calculate my income tax correctly before filing my returns? So good afternoon, Sonia, and lovely to be here on the show today. And uh, first and foremost, yes, of course, you need to calculate your uh, income correctly in order to figure out what sort of tax planning needs to be done. And for that, uh, you need to add up all the incomes that you have, not only from salary, but from other sources. So uh, I do see uh, people tend to miss out things like, for example, interest um, income that they might have on fixed deposits or, uh, for example, uh, capital gains, you know, and especially now that uh, people are investing in foreign stocks directly, they must remember that dividends that they get there are also fully taxable. And if they have made a sale of stock, uh, like, for example, a foreign stock, the taxation is going to be different from what it is on domestic um uh, on domestic equity right so it's important that you add up all of this you know another area that i have seen that uh, uh people tend to slight like, might might go wrong sometimes is of course on income from house property right and you might be receiving rents those are of course taxable many times people think that you can set off the rent received from the interest paid for the loan that's not possible uh, i mean it is but you know it's not a direct set off right so First is, you know, get all the incomes right. The second thing is also focus on the tax-free incomes and check whether they're really tax-free, right? So one is, of course, gifts that you receive from non-relatives. Uh, there are certain cases where insurance policies are going to be taxable, right? So, for example, uh, if, if you have bought a policy where the premium paying paid was more than 10% of the sum assured, then the, then the proceeds are going to be taxable. The other very big aspect is, of course, also on choosing, going, deciding which regime to really go with, right? So, um, you know, I mean, other than other than really getting the income tax calculation right, you also have to figure out what regime and match all the information that's there with the annual information statement. I think that's becoming very important now. Okay, well, let's get Sujit in, into this conversation because he pretty much does this day in and day out at Tax Buddy, right? Sujit, the uh, year end tax planning, how would you summarize it for our, uh, you know, for our viewers, our followers? What would the basic do and don'ts be? See, if you take the uh, sample lot of the uh, taxpayers and how they have uh, gone in their uh, preceding uh, the 11 months, because this is the 12th month of the financial year. One common thing which we see is that the erratic nature that ki we'll do in the coming month, let's do plan it in the last quarter, like that. And now at this juncture, when the uh, HR and everybody is asking for the planning, they will end up in doing go, falling prey to certain mis-sellings. So they need to follow some organized approach. So firstly, they should analyze the uh, whatever they have already done in the last uh, 10 months, 11 months. Secondly, on the basis of that, they should identify how much tax they have already saved. Thirdly, after that, they should identify what is the space available in ATC. And at the same time, is there their cash flow allows them to go for certain investment beyond ATC. And then they should select the investment instruments based on their age bracket and the goals and risk appetite. Last but not the uh, the most important aspect is that key, they should do proper analysis and informed decision about the which regime to be followed. As uh, uh, it is said in the beginning of the show, that tax regime selection has been a very uh, critical aspect in the taxpayers nowadays. Okay, got it, got it. So those are setting some of the rules, right? Mrin, uh, how do I invest properly to save tax? 
All right. So if you are following the old tax regime, uh, right, you have a whole lot of investment options. So there's one, uh, uh, and you know, in the new regime, of course, there's only corporate NPS. But if you're going for the old tax regime, uh, under Section 80C, you can invest up to 1.5 lakhs. So here you have fixed income options like the Employee Provident Fund. You have the Voluntary Provident Fund. Again, you have the uh, Public Provident Fund, which is PPF. So this is these are the fixed return schemes that are available that give you tax-free returns. Now, you also have schemes from post office, like, for example, the National Savings Certificate that's available. And of course, the most common scheme that you have, which has been chosen for decades and decades, are the insurance schemes. And finally, if you looked at the market link schemes, you have the ELSS, which is the equity link saving scheme. So I think, you know, the first thing is really to figure out what is the risk that I want to take, right? And what is the time period that I can invest for? Now, my recommended uh, scheme would be, of course, the ELSS because uh, it is an equity fund. It is um, low cost. And, you know, while it comes only with a three-year lock-in compared to most of the other schemes, even if you were look to look at it from a seven to eight-year time frame, the lock-in would still be lesser than all the other uh, options that you have. So, uh, you know, within all of these options, uh, the fixed return options, which are government guaranteed, tax-free in nature, and uh, the ELSS, I would go in for this. I would not look at options like uh, the post office schemes because they're fully taxable. And the second uh, instrument that I would not go in for is the investment linked insurance like endowment, ULIP, money back, uh, many other forms of investment linked insurance because uh, when one looks at uh, the post-tax uh, returns, they, they I'm, I'm sorry, not the post-tax, but the post-expense returns, uh, they tend to be a little low. So uh, I, I would not really prefer these schemes. Now, but, other than ATC, yeah, other than ATC, you also have over and above ATC, you have section 80 CCD, uh, which is investment in NPS, and you can invest as an individual or you can invest through your company. Okay, got it. Very well explained. So, Jeet, which steps should I take to have a holistic and optimized tax planning? See, there are two things. One is holistic uh, tax planning is one aspect and optimized tax planning is one aspect. And chronologically also, it comes first comes holistic and then optimized. As I said, holistic tax planning says that you should look into your whole uh, affairs, financial affairs, financial transactions, data for the year. So now, at this is the fag end of the financial year, what should one do for holistic tax planning? One should sit down, take out bank statement, check out the entries, because sometimes some you know, some some payments we are doing, which have a tax saving incidence, some expenditure we are doing, which have a tax saving incident, which we miss out, like a kid's tuition fees, or suppose we have paid uh, uh, certain registration charges for certain uh, property we have purchased and we have paid registration charges. So like that, many things are there which we'll find out from our bank statement, firstly. Secondly, along with that, <clears throat> we should identify the last minute payment which are we are going to do in the March. Likewise, my insurance advisor has reminded me yesterday I have to pay my term insurance. So term insurance, I'm going to pay my uh, installment in next two, three days. So certain payments which might not have been done by me till today, which may be missed out, those I have to identify and I have to note down. Mm -hmm. And accordingly, I have to work out how much I have already saved. And then the question comes of optimizing tax planning. For optimizing tax planning, as I said earlier, the important aspect is that key in ATC, the remaining tax bracket, which is available with me, how we can choose the instruments so that my tax can be saved, cash flow can be lesser, and wealth can be created. Mm -hmm. And that is a very tricky aspect to decide. So and last point, it, beyond ATC, but uh, saving taxes is very important. And that is one of the important aspects of uh, optimized tax planning because we can save beyond ATC and many people end up in just considering ATC as a tax saving uh, uh, instrument journey. Okay, you know, I have a practical question here and I just heard you mention, Suji, that your invest insurance advisor told you to, you know, your term insurance payment is coming up, right? A lot of this is so jargonized and I'm sure younger people find it very difficult to do this on their own. Do you think just like we have investment advisors, do we 
necessarily need to have tax advisors, insurance advisors and what is the kind of expense that one needs to make in order to make these smart decisions because you know people in any case are struggling between 20 and the age of 20 and 30 you are struggling with a lot of payments right there is barely any growth in your salary there are rents that you have to pay over and above that how do you plan for all these investments tax saving do you need to even spend on an advisor that's my question Sujit see my personal experience is that ki and it is very tricky. See, if investment has to be done, people may not be ready to pay for advisors. It is from my personal experience. Mm. But if there is a question of saving on taxes, people are ready to pay or pay, pay to the advisors. And here, another interesting aspect which uh, we have seen is that keep, uh, uh, and especially after these uh, new tax decisions which has come into the picture, picture so people, the youngsters who are in uh, 20s or even early 30s and mostly those who are not married or just married, their one, uh, one uh, ask is that ki my tax op optimization doesn't mean saving taxes. My tax optimization means two things. First, I have to pay less amount of tax. And secondly, my cash outgo should be less. So their more importance is to keep disposable cash in a more amount with them while availing the lesser tax rate and that's why for choosing which regime to follow and within that regime how i can optimize the taxes propensity to pay for advisors is there fair enough very sane advice there Mrin, i want to come to you on that as well but i need to take a short commercial break i'll come back in a bit to talk more about how you should plan for your taxes 31st march is the last day to file your taxes so um, lots more coming up we'll try and address some of your queries as well stay tuned Anand.